It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show! Brought to you through the support of the following. Awesome Comics at GalaxyCalledDallas.com SciFiFX.com and Voodoo Gingerbread Graphics. Music courtesy of FreePlayMusic.com You can contact the Fellowship at email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net And now, on with the show! Movie Grill Spring Valley does not get any of the big movies anymore. So kick hey ass there, too. everybody. This. <laughs> hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Fellowship of the Geeks show. I didn't know we were recording. I, I I said we were recording. No one listens I've to never me. Heard <laughs> no one <laughs> listens to me. You said it. I just didn't. You never I, know I, I hear a voice. Take start. <laughs> I, I hear a voice. Where's it coming from? Go into the light, Les. Go into the light. <laughs> Well, Mike, you and Les uh, have frozen screens. Mm, that is your opinion, sir. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that. My, Mike, he's moving on mine, and Les is just being a pain in the ass right now. So <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's breathing. I can see it. He's breathing. <laughs> anyway, maybe well, I can always I can always kick him off, and then see what happens. Um, introductions. I think we just kind of introduce each other already. <laughs> We may have actually. That's weird. <laughs> well, I mean, you and and James already got uh, uh, your names up there, and of course, since we have to have our names in the lights because we're so. I didn't hear anybody say you four morons. <laughs> you are flashers. That's all. <laughs> Gentlemen, who came in? Oh. Unless you just unless you just need to get a little piece of cardboard with your name and just hold it right up there in front of your camera. <laughs> He could pull an Alton Brown and do a sticky note. <laughs> He's going old school. Uh, Les Webster, not available. And unfortunately, Google's not letting me install the Hangout the toolbox on mine. I don't know why, but well, we do know why, but trying to get that worked out. So I hope everybody's having a good week. Um, things have been kind of crazy over here, as you can tell. <laughs> Anybody want to say anything before we get into tonight's show, or have we already said enough? Walter Dash. I think we've already got the flavor pretty well. I think so. we said enough. Let's just roll right, credits yeah, and go, go home. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Fortunately, um, so I can't do that. Tip your waitress. Tonight's uh, topic uh, was actually suggested by. I think it was James. What'd I do? Uh, uh, the three, uh, Les and James and I went to go see Elysium uh, oh, yeah. Friday. Oh, yeah. And after we we came out, we kind of started discussing some of the political and socio, uh, sociological uh, messages that were uh, were were being presented and James said, "Hey, let's let's save this and talk about it on the show." So, well, I really hadn't that, said that, so it would give me time to get you know my thoughts lined up, and well, that didn't happen. Left on you, huh? <laughs> and then he completely forgot about it so until right for this moment. So <laughs> I'm not sure I was more worried about now, the other two topics we were talking about. <laughs> so let's discuss it. All right, first of all, did everybody go see it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, Mikey hadn't seen it. I'm the only one. It's the three of y'all <laughs> went together. Oh, I can BS my way through it. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, I guess the next the last question is, do you plan on seeing it? It's possible. This It may hinge on this discussion right now, so... <laughs> All right, everyone, let's, let's try not to ruin Mikey's uh, future plans here. <laughs> well, I had already, I already had already said this when we came out. Um, you know, the early, early words about about the movie, they, they were talking about basically beating you over the head with the whole class warfare and, and some of the political... Uh, Stuff that was being mentioned. I don't think it was as bad as some people 
made out because um, you know once the folk the story kind of focused on Matt Damon's character and we went from there, it really went more a straight sci-fi action adventure type of a more of a traditional type of movie. Mm-hmm. Almost too much. Some people were complaining that it was almost it was almost too Hollywood of a film compared to District Nine. Yeah. Um, and I and kind of that, that the message that he started out with kind of got lost as you got towards the end. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for anybody uh, like Mike who hasn't seen the movie yet, it kind of revolves around the character Max, played by Matt Damon, who is a uh, <clears throat> who's a prior criminal that he's trying to go straight. He's working in a factory uh, making robots. Um, in fact, the the owner of that factory plays into the story. Um, when there's an accident at the factory, Max wants to take revenge on the guy um, because it's his pushing of everybody that kind of causes the accident. And so they're going to heist this guy's brain. Um, he has got information in his head, and so they decide to jack him, and they're going to try to take this information, and they're going to use it to... Uh, and by doing this job, Max is going to... Uh, in exchange for doing this job, Max will get a free ride to Elysium, to where he can get cured, um, because in the accident at the factory, he's only got five days to live. So, um, and so it's basically uh, Max trying to save himself, but in the end, he's also saving the world. Um, so it's the born identity meets meets crank. Pretty much. Um, in fact, they uh, a lot of people. Hey, said, that's actually pretty good. I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. You know, a lot of people have said that uh, the born identity actually kind of helped him prepare for this movie because there's so much action in it. Um, in a nutshell, the the message behind the movie is um, you take the situation we've got right now where you've got people from Mexico coming streaming across our borders, coming to America to get a better life. Well, in this movie, uh, instead of Mexico and, and uh, the Hispanics coming across the border, you've got the entire planet Earth is, uh, is basically Mexico, and they're trying to get to Elysium, which is now the United States. Um, or you know what I mean. Uh, so you've got you still get the border crossing uh, idea. Yeah. But even even so far to calling the people who arrived on Elysium illegals. Exactly. Um, which in a way I think is a little drastic. I, you know, we talked about this when we come out of the theater the other day. In this movie, it's really cut and uh, cut and dried. Um, people who don't have as much, who are poor. And don't have the the things that the people in Elysium do are are the good guys, and all the people that live on the space station Elysium, they're the bad guys. Even though really the only bad guy you see is Delacourt, played by Jodie Foster. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that and uh, her henchman, uh, I can't think of his name right now. <laughs> yeah, he was actually pretty good. I liked him. Well, and you know he's from uh, he's from the first movie. He uh, and yeah. from uh, which you know what the sad thing is, I still haven't seen District Nine. I've got it on my playlist somewhere that I will get to watching pretty soon. Um, but you know you've got you've got that whole thing where it's um, like I said, it's kind of cut and dried. You've got the the good guys, you got the bad guys, and the bad guys are really bad. You know when she tells you know uh, what's his name to shoot him out of the air. Well. Um, you know, that's, that's, and, and she could really care less. And then she looks the president of Elysium in the face and tells him that if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. And he just kind of cowers down. Uh, it's, it's you know, I don't know. It's, 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 to me, it's a little over the top when it, it's done like that. And uh, it's Charlotte Coakley is the guy's okay. name. Uh, yeah. Plays Kruger. Um... I didn't. I hadn't thought about it until I was think uh, a couple hours after seeing the movie. Did it, Don? H- had anybody noticed how they had Jodie Foster dressed up with the short hair and all that? Did she remind you of someone else? <laughs> and um, you, you guys, you guys go like, okay, are are we doing this on purpose or what? Well, Did you I, I pick don't it know. Up less? Not exactly. No. Who are you thinking? I don't think of? they're making her look like yeah. any particular. Hillary. Uh, 
I don't think they're making her look like any person in particular, but, uh, you know, they are giving her that uh, that no-nonsense business lady type appearance. And she was also the Secretary of... She was also the tech Secretary of Defense or State or whatever you want to call it. Oh, her right. position, so... Um... So I I just I found it kind of interesting. I'm not saying that it was done on purpose, but it sure kind of look it kind of looks funny. Well, and also I heard somebody else say uh, uh, I think it was on Twitter. Somebody posted said so. In the future, everyone on Earth is going to speak Spanish, and everyone else on the space station is going to speak French. Yeah, which that was kind of strange too. You think that there would be a lot of different languages spoken, and not just one in particular. Um, now, considering where they were at, uh, weren't they supposed to be in the Los Angeles area um, on Earth, or was that I was totally... This, yeah, on Earth it was focused. Uh, Max's home was in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. So they that's didn't, they didn't. Yeah, so they didn't, they didn't, they really didn't show anywhere else on yeah, the planet, so... so. That's understandable for, for Spanish to be spoken there, but it is kind of strange for... And I guess that's one of my uh, small problems with the movie is you don't get any get any um, pretext to how it all happened. You know, I don't know. What uh, world government in their right mind would let these people go off and, and do this? Or is that the world government? Uh, you know, ruling from on high. And so, and if they've got all that money and uh, to produce those machines like that, how hard is it to uh, leave, you know, put some on Earth and help, you know, if they're that easy to use, why do you even need doctors on the planet in the first place? Thoughts? I don't know. If you, I mean, you could almost look at the at Lazarus in, in 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 a similar light, as in how can we? I mean, how long would it take for the world economy to be to for a handful of people to assume full control of the world economy? I mean, if 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 enough really wealthy people right now decided, okay, we're gonna build, we're gonna team up our we're going to pool our resources, which is just an incredible crap load of money, and build a space station so we can move off the planet. What would stop them? I mean, there's not really anything out there that could. I mean, if, they're, if they've got enough funds to throw at enough governments that it would matter, whatever governments technically control low orbit, and paid off whoever they needed to pay off, it wouldn't be that hard to build a space station and mm -hmm. move to it. Um, and over the course of a generation or two, they could expand and advance technology, and it could be self-sufficient. I mean, it's not that big a science fiction stretch. And it would also, funneling that much of the world economy into the space station w might do some significant damage to the world economy I, along the way. But if the 1% decided they wanted to do this, don't you think the 99% would be storming the, the gates of oh. the launch area because <laughs> they know that they're going to build this large thing in space and not allow anybody on Earth there, just the elite live there. And to me, yeah, you had some French people there. To me, that meant that it was worldwide. It was not just the U.S. The fact is that they were stationed over the U.S. in this uh, this uh, circle of life, I guess. Uh, and it was just perched above the U.S. rather than showing it in orbit around the world. Mm -hmm. See, again, that's another great question is, was it just U.S. citizens or was it a worldwide thing? And like you said, um, one of the things uh, that you're talking about, like the 1%, my, my question is, all right, the 1%, not all 1%ers are evil or, or 
of that state of mind where they're going to go, I'm getting off, getting off this planet, screw everybody else. So I guess uh, my, my thing is, how, how easily would that happen when you when all one percenters are not like that, well, you know you're going to have a, uh, a number of one percenters that go, hey, that's not right. We're not going to do that. Uh, so that that to me still makes it a little more a fantastic of an idea for it to actually come to fruition. Well, sure, agreed. The, but I think I mean my my point is that it's it is. Well, I heard you. You called me a big butt. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it is far fetched, but it is also doable. True. I mean, I, it, if nothing else, I mean, people, those one percenters are, um, they tend to be the, they tend to be strong personalities. So it would be very unlikely for them to be controlled or hoodwinked by mm -hmm. a handful of them. But it's not completely impossible. It's not totally unreasonable. I I would have probably liked to have seen. Some of the uh, citizens of Elysium actually helping to try to bring this about. Um, maybe like the president, you know, the one that got uh, talked down to by Delacorte, you know, maybe him, uh, maybe not necessarily him, but somebody that he's influencing, uh, saying, hey, make this happen. Kind of like she told, what's his name, make this happen. Uh, with the whole uh, rebooting of the, the, the software, um, I just, um, I don't know, it's, uh, to me it was like, like I said, it was one of these where uh, it's almost like an old western. Uh, the good guys are wearing the white hats, the bad guys are wearing the black hats, so you know who's who, and, and there's no in-between. There's no, there's no gray area. Well, sure. Yeah. The, other, the other reason that is useful in terms of making a movie is because you're already, with the, the science fiction aspect, you've got near future, you've got this completely different world sort of thing going on. It, making the good guys and the bad guys easy to distinguish is useful because n otherwise you're having to do an awful lot of exposition to explain to people who the bad guys are and why they're bad guys. If you just put black hats on them, it makes it a whole lot easier for the general populace to follow the story. Well, in that case, then maybe maybe my, my point is the, the storyline was a little too simple for, for my taste then. Right. I would have liked to have seen you know why things were a certain way. Right. But you know, all in all, it was still a great movie. Uh, I'm not going to deny more, that. Your your interest, you're see the deal. Part of the deal is you're talking about the the story itself as opposed to the action flick. Yeah, exactly. You want the story, and what you got was an action flick. And actually, I could throw some curveballs at you for the French Spanish thing. Mm -hmm. um, Four hundred years ago, um, a most of the ruling class of Europe. Um, spoke French as their primary language, regardless of what language, what country they were actually ruling. Um, all of the German kings spoke French, all of the Russian kings spoke French, all of, even the Spanish guys spoke French. It was all, it, mainly because they were all interrelated. The, the British people, they, they were all, they were all French speaking, and mm -hmm. a lot of times the, the ruling ruling monarchs of their own countries didn't speak the native language of their country because they had been brought in from wherever and they were all related to each other. So that in and of so that it's French could just be a nod to something like that. And it's it could, that's true. It, again it could be just a bit of an oversimplification. Just making if you're you're wanting to segregate what you're going to do is, if you're going to move up to the space station, you're going to make make it a point of speaking a different language than the people mm -hmm. on the ground to, to further the elitist thing. That's true. See, I told you I could BS my way through this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of reminded me that the people on Elysium kind of reminded me of the B&L people from Wally. They were just there. They everything was at their beck and call, and nothing was wrong with whatever they did. Because they so, didn't do anything. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they would go and lie down and be cured of something. You went, okay, that's a little different. Yeah, I mean, they sh they show a woman out sun tanning, and she comes in and gets on, on the medical bed and automatically cured of skin cancer. Self-righteous. <laughs> We lost Mikey. Okay, no, I got to see this movie. <laughs> well, that's I where that. I mean, it, 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 this is hilarious. Did it or did it not? Did I'm did watch or this did not comedy. happen? Yes, it did. I'm happened. gonna I'm gonna watch this as a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like Wally meets Idiocracy. It's awesome. Oh, which which I have right here next to me on the table. I just haven't watched it yet. Which one? But I took y'all's. Wally or Idiocracy? Idiocracy. Okay. <laughs> Watch it. It's fun. Just need to make sure. Just clarification. Just a little, and little the fun, what, One of the things that makes it fun is that it doesn't always feel like a comedy. That's that's what... Uh, it is a comedy. It, I think it was it Troy totally made the comedy. comment. He said there's going to be times that you look at it and you go... Oh my God! This is fact. This is this is like a documentary. <laughs> this is going to happen. Yeah. This there, this is yeah. not just possible. This is freaking reality. <laughs> it's yeah, already it's happening little, somewhere. It's a little disturbing, and you'll get that feeling in the first five minutes. Seriously. I'm gonna go put the kid to bed and put it on right now. <laughs> no, no, you're not getting out of this show that easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. She's going to Grandma's tomorrow. I'll have plenty of time to watch it then. There you go. As far as I'm concerned, Mike, yes, go see it. It's it's worth it. It's worth the time. Uh, it got a little predictable, but yeah. I kind of have to expect that. A not little? Any, I thought it was very predictable. It's not any more predictable than most of the remakes they're putting out, so whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 thought, I thought it was pretty good. Obviously, they can bank predictable, so there you go. So, any other comments about Elysium? Um, like, like I said, once you get through what about the first thirty minutes or so, the the, the messages are pretty much gone, and it's a pretty much straightforward sci-fi action adventure. I, I have to admit, uh, I give a big five stars to the weapons that were used. There were some really cool weapons, <laughs> and what's really scary is. Probably about 75% of those weapons are in use right now, or prototyped somewhere. So if you're a gun nerd... <laughs> uh, I'm going to agree with Thomas, because, uh, yeah, after the first few minutes of it, you finally get to the plot. <laughs> it's no longer a preaching session. They actually do have a plot to follow. So... Uh, I, I think the only problem I had with it was there were no B, uh, BEMs there, so I was kind of wanting something like that to break up the monotony on the Earth side of the story. If he did District 9, he can at least toss some BEMs in there. <laughs> what are you expecting after Earth or something? I mean, come on now. Didn't that bomb once already this summer? Let's not have a repeat of that. <laughs> At least after Earth had won. Well, yes. Oblivion, Oblivion had some, so. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> on, on my viewer down here at the bottom of the screen, I still have Les's picture uh, uh, frozen in this. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's the face he's making the whole time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Well, I keep putting it up there wondering, is he moving? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, he's moving now. Jeez, what a nice guy. Don't worry, folks, he's smiling now. <laughs> that's more of a teeth-clenched grimace, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> oh. So, 
see it. Uh, you, need, you need to see it, Mike. Yep. I'll check it out sometime. Netflix it. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anything else before we, we move on? No. Okay. We've kind of beat it to death. I think so. Okay. Cool. Let's get into this week's game. <laughs> surprised, good? not surprised. Who wants to go first? About what? Huh? No, no, you don't get to know the questions before you go, before you volunteer. That's oh, no man. Fun. It's wrong. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, this, this, this ought to be fun. Um... Last week, uh, Kevin McGuire had gone on Twitter uh, commenting that he thought he was fired from Justice League 3000, and come back, come about you know a little bit later. Then yes, he has been replaced uh, on the title that, and now the title's been delayed. It was supposed to come out in October. It's been delayed till December. Uh, but he's been replaced by Howard Porter, and the reason reasoning is, is the book is supposed to be dark, grim, and gritty, and apparently his art doesn't show that. So, are you surprised about all this going down, Les? I am surprised to a degree because when they named the the trio that were doing the title I was expecting uh, the JLA run they had back in the <laughs> the Bwahaha the Bwahaha series which was great which was fun uh, Howard Porter is a very good artist and I'm sure he can pull off some of the stuff but uh, as far as I'm concerned DC should have stepped forward and said, we want this gritty. And should have said, uh, we, need an, uh, we need the art to do this. That's like saying, uh, who was it that did Detective 27? Uh, uh, Michael Lark. People were saying Michael Lark can't do... Uh, action scenes. Well, if the, the, the thought, the, what I'm getting at is if the thought is there that uh, McGuire's work is too much of a cartoon, then why did you ask him to be there in the first place? If you were going to treat this with the outlook that uh, what they gave you back in the Justice League series, you should have expected that same thing. Don't don't toss a guy out. Uh, the, the problem I do have is in his comments he made reference to uh, Giffen's uh, statement, and I can see where that could hurt uh, McGuire because Giffen was saying, "Welcome aboard, Howard. we we think the best of you." Yeah, and then just um, then just leave the guy hanging there. So it's a, it's a surprise to me, but it's not a surprise to me, if, if, you, if you see what I mean. Yeah, well, yeah. In, in, with Giffen's comments, I think he just phrased it the wrong way. I think he was trying to make Porter feel welcome, but yeah, it looks like he's, he's leaving McGuire out in the cold, and I don't think that was his intention. I think he was, you know, um, because Porter, you know, is is probably going to receive some flack for this, and he didn't deserve anything. He, you know, all he did was he he's the one who designed the characters that and that was basically all his portion of it, and until this happened. So you know he's you know so. What I see him doing though is taking McGuire's layouts and just replacing it with his artwork. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the case. Otherwise, they wouldn't be delaying the book till December. I think he's going to go back from scratch. Wow! Well, then he's got a long road to hoe. So, 
Mikey, you want to go next? Okay. Um, at this point in the game, I'm going to go not surprised. Um, well, okay. Yeah, generally I'm not surprised. I think we've seen this happen enough in the past year with DC making seemingly oddball decisions and announcing them through social media, apparently, like hiring and firing decisions. They, they, they just, uh, it's, it's, that just the, the thing that surprises me is that they don't seem to be able to learn from their mistakes. That's the only part that surprises me at this point. I am not at all surprised by the fact that they're still letting their own image bite them in the ass this way. It's just, it's, it's almost funny, except that it's really not because, I mean, they're only hurting themselves. Well, and all the artists that they screw over in the process. But, I mean, come on, people. It, 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 how, how does a company last as long as they have and do as well as they've done and be one of the big two um, publishers of, of this particular type of book in the country and still not seem to have any idea how to deal with these freelance workers that they that they use all the time? I just that, that as as I mean the the actual artistic decision doesn't surprise me. The the fact that the management, the failure on the part of their management to handle these situations continuously, that I just don't get. James? I'm going to have to say that I'm not surprised with them either. Um, in fact, one of my favorite things to watch now is uh, the website The Outhouse and uh, their little ticker that they've got. What has DC or what is has DC screwed up today? <laughs> yeah, uh, has DC done something stupid today? And yeah. uh, they've got a little sign that says it has been, and how many days since DC Comics did something stupid? And um, I kind of watch that, and it's it's pretty entertaining. But Les and I were talking about it earlier today about how McGuire sent out this tweet, not knowing what was going on, and then to turn around and have um, uh, Giffen. Uh, doing this interview with um, who was he talking to? Was it Newsarama? Yeah, yeah. And they they asked him, you know, uh, about what was fixing to happen. And uh, his quote was, "The guy who nailed the character designs on the interior of the book, the guy who teamed with Grant Morrison to make JLA a hit. This is what they call a no-brainer." Series co-writer Keith Giffen said in an exclusive statement in Newsarama. "Welcome aboard, Howard. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful collaboration." And that's when. Um, McGuire turns around and says, after a few confusing hours, I kind of know where things stand and why, though I'm still a bit perplexed as to how it got to this point. As for work, I've been offered some fun, interesting stuff, many of which came from D.C., who were very eager to keep me working there, so I'll be fine on that score, but it would have been great to do another Justice League with Giffen and De uh, Dematteis. Oh well, onward and upward. And... You, you kind of got to put yourself in this guy's shoes. Here it is. They just come down, and he's hired to come and do something. And you would think that they're going to tell him exactly what they want. And unless he just totally had a, a brain meltdown and or decided to say, you know what, screw it, I'm doing this, I'm going to do it this way, which I find it hard to believe, uh, you really got to kind of look at DC and go, what the heck were you people thinking? You know, or or is there some underlying thing there? Um, is it somewhere down the line that we're gonna uh, somebody's gonna pop up and say, oh, he actually got fired because of this? It had nothing to do with his, you know, whatever, you know, his drawing or anything. And then to turn around and have uh, the guy that he was working with, Giffen, sit there and say that. And like you guys said, you know, he may have been just trying to make Howard feel good, but preface it with, you know, hey, I'm really I really hate seeing McGuire go because I really liked working with him and uh, I'm I'm not exactly sure why he was let go or maybe it maybe or maybe he was let go because they really wanted something darker and grittier and they don't think he really, you know, lived up to it or whatever. Then go into the the accolades for the new guy coming in. But just as it was, you know, it's it is it does seem kind of uh, it's a slam on McGuire. Exactly, you know. 
And who knows, though? Newsarama may have, uh, and I haven't seen the entire interview, so it may have been taken out of context, too. Yeah. But or at face value, it's... Just, or the guy could have been just weirded out by the fact that he was all of a sudden the one having to deal with this situation. And he, yeah, he, yeah. He just, he just froze up and didn't deal with it and just went on to try... He, he, he thought keeping it positive would be the best way to go, and it wasn't, really. I yeah. Mean, sometimes you just have to nut up and be the guy who says, look, this was this is a weird situation. Um, and I'm really sorry for the guy who's not doing this job anymore, but we're really happy about the new guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, my thoughts. Um, I'm surprised, not surprised. You were both? I'm both. Um, like Mike said, I'm surprised that this keeps happening. I don't understand this. Um, you know, obviously someone higher up is like, okay, you know, we're, we're not going to do the Legion anymore. We want to do a Just League book in the future. Mm -hmm. Who can we get to do this? Oh, it would be awesome if we can get these three guys together again and just recapture that magic. Oh, but we don't want to do it funny action adventure, we want it grim and gritty because that's what everybody wants apparently, which that's not true. That's what's selling right now supposedly in their mind. Yeah. So, you know, this is happening way too often like Mike said. You know, the whole thing of of, of announcing uh, Joshua uh, oh god, I'm going to butcher his name. Fellow fell off, uh, I'm sorry I bitched his name, he was going to do the Green Lantern Corps. Mm -hmm. big, big news, as part of as part of the new guard of the Green Lantern books, here's all the new writers and new artists, and he's one of them, and then a month later they're announcing, oh, he's no longer on the book, you know, they're getting someone else. I'm like, seriously? In a month? All of a sudden? And, and it's been going on since they started the New 52. Mm -hmm. I just, I, you know, I, you know, it may have been happening before, but it just didn't happen as frequently, and it just didn't seem so totally brain dead or something. I don't know. Um, you know, they knew what they were getting. They knew what Giffen and Demetrius can write. They know what McGuire can draw. If that was if if a grim and gritty book was what they were wanting, I don't quite honestly I'm not sure if Giffen can do that. De Mateus can. Uh, McGuire, his art doesn't really lend to that. Could he do it? I don't know. He's not really been given a chance, as far as I know. Maybe he could. Maybe he can't. Um, and then and the thing is is you know he. They get him off the book, and they turn around. And apparently, offered him a backup tale, or doing a digital comic. And he's like, "Well, I really would like something, you know, <laughs> you know. I don't know about that." And then all of a sudden, Brian Michael Bendis says, "Hey, you want to do Guardians of the Galaxy issue ten? Sure." So that's what he's going to do. He's going to do that issue, and then who knows what's going on after that? He's been apparently he's been offered a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that sounds this. off. That sounds awful familiar because you know we went through this with Gail Simone, with the whole you know her getting she's fired by email sure and like oh I don't know about you know what's going on here and all of a sudden everybody in everybody comes out of the woodwork says oh hey Gail would you like to write this more than like I bet you anything that's why she's writing Red Sonia and that's why she's going to write Tomb Raider and she got all these offers when when she was kicked off Bad Girl. Oh yeah, bank on it. That's absolutely yeah, you know what? You know what this reminds me of. Um, this was a true story. Uh, they, well, okay, I take that back. This was a story that was on one of those um, court shows in the afternoon. <laughs> a man named Joe. No, a lady, uh, a lady, and uh, I guess her boyfriend or her husband went to a comedy club. Heard the comedian on stage, turned right around, and hired him to do their child's birthday party. This was a nasty comedian. 
yet they hired him to do their child's birthday party. Well, so basically, they, they knew he could do dirty, but they hired him to do a kid's birthday party. And, of course, both parties, yeah, kind of, you got, uh, got the judge chewing him out because he looks at her and goes, all right, first of all, you're at a, you, you hear a nasty routine from this guy, and yet you hire him to do a birthday. And then you, yeah, okay, you do dirty, dirty comedy and everything, yet this woman tells you she wants you to do a child's birthday, and you go, and you okay. Say, okay, yeah. <laughs> So it, it it reminds me of that sort of you know. Well, and but we don't we don't see. We weren't a party to the discussion, so we exactly. don't know if if we don't know we don't know if they were told, hey, this is gonna be grim and gritty. This yeah. is what we want the title to be. Um, the whole thing with Joshua, the whole thing. Apparently, Scuttlebutt, which of course DC will never, no one's gonna ever. Confirm or deny is they were wanting to kill off John Stewart, right? And he did not want to do that, so that's why he left. And my thinking when all that happened, I was like, guys, when you when you brought him in to talk to him about doing the book, did you ask him what he may want to do? Did you tell him? Did you say, hey, what do you feel about this happening, or would you be interested in doing that? I don't, I don't understand this. If I'm a publisher and I'm want to bring in someone to write a book, I would like to know what his or her take would be on the characters. And you know, if I have certain ideas that want I want to be written and, and, and put in the book, I would ask them, "How do you feel about this? Are you interested? Would this make you? Would this interesting? Or would you want to do this?" And depending on what he or she says, I may hire them. You know, maybe they'll maybe they come back and say, "Well, you know, I would rather do this." And I say, "Hey, okay, you know what? That's a great idea. Do it." I don't, I don't understand this because it almost sounds like uh, DC hires you to do a title, but they go, "Okay, we're hiring you to write this title, but here's a template. This is what you want to. We want you to write in into, uh, kind of like a Mad Libs. All right, here here's the Mad Libs. You fill in the blanks." It really, it really sounds like that the writing is actually the plotting is coming up from higher up, uh-huh. and it and it's the writers who have to do whatever they're saying. That's I'm right. sure, I'm sure certain writers are allowed leeway, yeah. especially if your name like Jeff Johns or Scott Snyder, you know, a couple others maybe that they can they have carte blanche, but I think the other ones. This is what we want you to write, so you know you can do it. Or if you're not interested, then you know there's the door. Just don't badmouth us on Twitter, otherwise you'll never get hired from us again. Because remember, remember that was one of the things after the whole Gail thing, after the Gail Simone thing. Because when she went on Twitter and said, "I think I've been fired," which sounds awful familiar, uh, they said, you know, said you know, you gotta you gotta watch going on the social media and, and talking about it, otherwise. You know, you're gonna be, you know, the door's gonna be closed well, to you for a while. Let's let's be realistic. If these people aren't sure whether they've been fired or not, then you've screwed up already. I mean, this should be something. Yes, it's unpleasant. Yes, it's difficult. But there shouldn't be any doubt. I mean, if you're going to fire somebody, if you're going to remove somebody from a title, it needs to be made clear to them that you are doing this. This is good business practice, boys and girls. This is not just something. This is not something that's just polite. You have to tell somebody if you're firing them from a job, especially a freelancer, because uh, they, not, uh, they aren't going to Don't otherwise. don't come in this weekend. Oh, great! I'm getting two days off. All right. I'll see you Monday. Well, that's not quite what we meant. Right. Yeah. If you can't play that game. That's not good business sense. And, you know, these people have been working with freelancers long enough to know this. You can't just drop hints at people that you're firing. That's not how this works. No. I mean, you're cutting off a paycheck. That's not... You can't screw around with that. Yeah. you got to be serious about it. And why is it only DC we ever hear about? We don't hear about it. If the others are doing it, we're not hearing about it on social media, that's for sure. That's a good point. I 
that seems it seems it, I'm I'm not saying that it is happening. It seems more likely that it's not happening yeah. elsewhere. So, I well, I I I think if someone was being tr treated pretty bad, I, I at this day and age, I think we would know about it because whether he or she would come out and say it, someone knows about it, and it's it's gonna it's gonna hit it's gonna hit the internet. It's a pretty tight circle. You know, the um, who work for the the people who work for those companies, people who write and draw for for DC and Marvel. There's just not that many of them, and well, a lot of them are pretty active on Twitter, and so they're talking to each other. They're buddies. Yeah. They yeah. meet each other at cons, and they share war stories, and they get along really well, and they understand each other. And yeah, they're going to they're, they're going to they're friends, and they're going to they're going to back each other up when weird stuff happens like this. Yep. Yeah. All right, next item up for bid. I'm actually going to take this moment to bow out, gentlemen. I got to go get a kid to bed. All righty. Uh, Have a good time, you, James. I will see you all next Tuesday. Amen. All right. Have a great night. Good night. Good night, sir. Ooh. And then there well, were three. Not, well, he's not going to win the game. That's for darn sure. That's true. That's true. <laughs> he didn't stick around, so he's coming in last place. <laughs> Uh, Valent and Valiant announced last week uh, that they are putting their first superhero team together called Unity, which I kind of find interesting because it's a nod to their uh, crossover from the earlier the '90s uh, incarnation of the of the title. Mm -hmm. Um. And apparently, the whole purpose of the team is to take out Exo Manowar. Mikey. Um, I'm going to say not surprised, because why not? I mean, they're, they, they're doing really well. I mean, and, they're, and deservedly so. Right now, Valiant is kicking ass. I mean, they're... Their books are good. They're well written, well drawn. People are buying them. Um, there's no reason not to start doing crossover stuff. Um, it works for everybody else. Why shouldn't they? Um, and I mean, it almost doesn't matter which which of their titles they decide to pick on at this point. I think Exo Manowar is probably a good candidate. But hey, you know. I mean, let them run with it. Let them have fun. Everybody, it's the, the whole, like, I mean, the whole summer blockbuster crossover thingy must be working because they keep people keep doing it. The bigger companies keep doing it. Why shouldn't Valiant have a shot at it? Yeah. And this is actually going to be, an, as far as I understand, it's going to be an ongoing series. So it'll be interesting to see how the team works stays together and all that and you, who knows um, yeah it'd be interesting to see how they build the dynamic yes exactly that's, Let, just said, but that's okay you, you did a great job <laughs> less eight plus Mike uh, I, I agree with Mike I, it does not surprise me I think that they were at a point where they needed to make sure that if you knew of they're single titles, then you should be rewarded with uh, a group title. Uh, that's what DC did, that's what Marvel did, so let's go ahead and try this with uh, their Unity title, which is a, yes, it is a callback to their uh, very short run back in the 90s. Uh, I'm Sorry to say I haven't seen Turok, Son of Stone, in this yet, so I'm not sure that he'll ever show up again. The, I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. What? I was just saying I don't. they don't have the rights. The last I know was Dark Horse. Okay. But Dark Horse had Turok and, and Dr. Solar and uh, Mag Mangus, I think. Magnus. Magnus, sorry. That's okay. Uh, go, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, it just seems to me that, yeah, it's time to get on that train. Let's go ahead and put this title out there. 
Uh, if we're going to pick on one one hero in the Valiant universe, Exo seems to be the one. He was the first one reestablished with their titles. So let's go ahead and smack him around. Uh, yeah, and I can see what they're in their group dynamic. I expect them to have somebody that is going to say, hey, we shouldn't do this. They're going to have somebody that is just gung-ho. They're going to have a middleman saying, oh, why are we doing this? You know, that maybe this guy hasn't hurt anybody or maybe he is the worst person in the, the world. Uh, I can see, the point is I can see Diane doing this. I can see them jumping in and saying, let's give him a group title. Let's see what happens. And if it's an ongoing series, that's, that's fine too. That'll mean one more title in their uh, gathering, and that brings them to what six or six or eight titles. Uh, so, I think it's doable. Yeah, it's a wise choice on their part. Yep. Um, I'm not surprised. I think I think it's a great idea. Uh, I'm I'm with Mike. They can't seem to do anything wrong. They've 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 handled this uh, comeback, if you want to call it a comeback, or 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 uh, or restart or whatever, however you want to phrase it. Them coming back, I think, has been great. I think they've handled it real well. Uh, I've enjoyed the stories. The art's been great. Um, They've been running on all cylinders since the get-go, and I've been I've been pretty pleased with what they've done. Because I, I didn't read the Valiant books when they first came out. Oh, okay. Uh, well, no, I'm talking the stuff in the '90s. I didn't read. Yeah. Um, I did pick up some books when they first started coming, talking about coming back, and I got some of them just to kind of read because I knew, hey, these are not going to be the more than likely not going to be the same versions, but just kind of get some kind of familiarity with some of the characters, and I've enjoyed I've enjoyed what they've been putting out the last uh, what has it been a year and a half? Yeah, this, this is this is their second summer, so was, they they started up not long after I joined up. Because Exo Manowar One was one of the first ones, one of the first ones ever used. Yeah, so so it's the the beginning of 2012 then, so a year and a half, little or a year 18 months, something like that. Um, I've enjoyed it, and, and it seems to be really successful. Um. Not only with critics, but it seems to be doing well sales wise. So hey, I'm, uh, yeah, this was the this was the next logical step. Uh, so we'll see. And that is surprise, not surprise. Yay! Um, before we bow out for this week. Anybody have anything they want to kind of bring up? I saw your reviews for uh, Thunder Agents. So I'm looking forward to that. That's supposed to come out tomorrow? It comes out tomorrow. Yep, I am I'm reviewing that one. Mm-hmm. Mikey, you have anything? Um, I did not get a chance to actually watch it, but there's big stink about a new teaser for Guardians of the Galaxy that's out there now. If you can find it, I've watched it like ten times. It's only thirty seconds long. I have not had a chance to see it. I only started really started hearing about it this afternoon. So I didn't yeah. Well, I had actually found it on Facebook. Someone had posted it, and I shared it on my Facebook on my my wall yesterday 
yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon. Then I re looked and noticed last night that it was gone. So the original post apparently was gone from the whoever whoever posted it first time. Obviously deleted it because I was gone and I didn't delete it. Uh, it looks it looks interesting. Uh, I had to chuckle because the music they used was hooked on a feeling. <laughs> Including the Uga Chaka. <laughs> but seeing Rocket Raccoon with with uh with uh I don't know if it was machine gun or, or something very similar to that. Uh, it that looked pretty cool. And we see John C. Riley um there for a second. We don't know who he's talking to, he said but he says and they call themselves Guardians of the Galaxy, and then you hear his voice go, "What a group of a holes!" <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what they said—a <laughs> group of a holes, or what a holes? Something, something a holes. And we're like, "Okay, we can see how this is gonna go." <laughs> uh, if you can find it, uh, it, it moves. It moves so fast, so you can't really see. What's going on? But um, that's why I had to watch it ten times, try to see if I can catch <laughs> catch some of it. Yeah, just try to get you know. So, cool. so yep, it's out there if you can find it. Uh, there is some debate to authenticity. Someone says that it's not real, but from what if you look if you look at it, it looks like there's a bunch of people in an audience. Watching it on a big screen, so I'm having a problem with that being not authentic. Yeah, it looks like it was at the Comic Con. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know why some people are saying it's that it's not authentic when it, like, you know. So who I don't know. Um, did notice that. Uh, Steve Niles and Jimmy Paviotti, Ron March, and a couple of other writers are, are starting up a new uh, program. Uh, I think it's called Sky, uh, what was it called? Skype Hype or something like that. Um, and the fir the first thing supposed to, the first one's supposed to happen tomorrow, but apparently they uh, a bunch of writers include you know I think it was Steve Niles who started off the conversation talking about really wishing to visit more stores and 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 talk to people and that kind of stuff but with with traveling and the cost and doing cons and of course being away from actually trying to do your job it was kind of hard to do so what they were going to do is try to you know if if stores if stores would contact them they would set up a time and do a Google hangout at the store so they would be there at the store Via internet, and you know, you can talk to talk to talk to people, and I think there's other things that are going to be involved in all that. And I think I I, I sent y'all I sent y'all the link to the to the to the story, and I thought I just thought that's a great idea. I do too. Yeah. Well, and it's been about a year since you two interviewed Steve Niles via Skype. Am I correct in that? Yeah. So obviously doable, and the fact that that some some of the leaders of the, of the in in the industry are going to start looking for it, that can't be a bad thing. That's just going to improve access to these guys, which is awesome, just across the board. Yeah, I think that's. I just think it's an awesome idea because. Through this, they can go to stores that you know they couldn't go to before, especially smaller towns. You know, it, it's one thing if they were here in Dallas and they could maybe hit a couple stores, which is asking a lot for them. If they're in town to do a con, they're there all day. You know, afterwards they're going to want to unwind. They're not going to want to go to a store and do another sit down. For a couple of hours and sign and 
or draw or or talk to people. They're you know they're going to want to unwind and get ready for the next day or get ready to go home or something. So right, you're talking about asking them to drive around in a city they're not familiar with to find a tiny little store in some strip mall somewhere, 45 minutes away or something from the hotel they're staying at. And it's I mean yet once they show up they have to be there for two or three hours just because there's probably a line forming. Yeah. Just to see them, and so they have to find their way back. And I mean, it's, by then they're not getting any sleep. Yeah. And so yeah, it's a big drain, and if they can find a way to do that remotely. You know, that's that's great. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'm 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 thrilled about it. I think it. it. Yeah. I think it's just an awesome idea, and I'm I'm glad. It's a simple idea too. That's that's the other part. It's just. I love. Yeah, it's no, it's nothing elaborate, so it's no cost of time or money on either side. You just, right, it's an internet so. connection and free software. I mean, yeah, that's that's all you need right there. I like it. So it's, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's 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 perfect. Uh, one more thing before we sign off. Um. Just kind of a reminder, uh, our friend Taffeta Darling has a new show. Uh, it's on Sundays at 3 p.m. Central Time on DeepLMOnAir.com. It's called Fangirls, Dames of the Roundtable. Uh, I watched the show last week. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, there was a lot, uh, there, I know there was... A, uh, quite a few people watching it, uh, and quite, uh, live and in saw it in re in repeats. Uh, I think it. She said something about over four thousand views already. And I'm like, wow. Uh, so, y'all get a chance. Check it. Check out her show, or or go to. Um, uh, her website, taffetadarling, com. I don't know if she's got the links there, but she's got links to her other blogs. I'm sure there's going to be a link to the shows there, too, so just check it out. Um, it was it was fun watching. So, Any other things before we sign off tonight? I take that as a no. All right, with that, uh, we wish you a good evening and hope you all have a good rest of the week. And we'll see you next time. Uh, Mikey is at Mikey Geek on Twitter. It's true. And James, who's not here, he is... Uh, it is... Is it Galaxy underscore at, Dallas? At Galaxy underscore Dallas. At galaxy underscore Dallas dot, uh, and we're at at Fellowship Geeks on Twitter, uh, Facebook. We're Fellowship of the Geeks. So follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, if you got anything, you know, if you want to talk to us, email at the Fellowship of the Geeks dot net. We appreciate any kind of input, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, just on Twitter, huh? Track us down on Twitter. Yep. Pester us. And and Mike, as Mike's already said, he's threatening to do a a, a false wet Les Webster uh, Twitter account. So we may have some fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we bid bid you a good evening and hope to see you again soon. Good night, folks. Good night, guys. Good night.